Welcome to Language Access 101, incorporating language access laws into your legal practice. This video is an overview of language access laws with the goal of helping lawyers understand the principles around language access that may be relevant to limited English proficient clients they serve. Beyond providing interpreters for your own communication with an LEP client and ensuring that the court provide an interpreter for all legal proceedings that LEP client is involved in, language barriers and language access issues may also have impacted the client's case itself. Being aware of the legal obligation, where it exists, to provide appropriate language access services is critical to an attorney's ability to adequately represent a client. For these reasons, it is important to understand language access issues in the context of client representation. This video provides an overview of basic language access laws and policies. You may also be interested in viewing an upcoming video on advocating for your client's language access needs and rights, which will be the subject of an upcoming training available in the spring of 2012. What is language access? Language access generally refers to the need to ensure that all individuals can access the services and programs in a language that they understand. This concept is rooted in fundamental principles of fairness and access to justice. Language access more specifically is the term used to refer to the obligation of all entities receiving federal financial assistance to ensure that limited English proficient or LEP individuals have meaningful access to the programs and services provided by the recipient. Or conversely, the rights of an LEP person to meaningful access to programs and services provided by recipients of federal financial assistance. First, let's establish some basic definitions. Limited English proficiency refers to an individual whose primary language is not English and who has a limited ability to read, speak, write, or understand English. Meaningful access refers to the provision of appropriate language services that allow an LEP person the ability to interact with a program or service, such that they can do so in a meaningful way. Additional definitions and terms will be explained in context throughout this video. The basic building blocks of language access rights, that is, the legal authority that governs language access work, and the obligation of federal financial recipients to provide meaningful access to their programs and services for LEP persons are Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, its implementing regulations, Executive Orders 12250 and 13166, Federal Agency LEP Guidance Documents, and relevant case law. In addition, other relevant laws may be applicable, depending on the court or jurisdiction such as the U.S. Court Interpreter Act, which governs the use of interpreters in federal court. The following slides go into each of these building blocks in more detail. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is the federal law that protects individuals from discrimination on the basis of their race, color, or national origin in programs that receive federal financial assistance. The intent behind the creation of this legislation was summed up in President John F. Kennedy's message calling for the enactment of Title VI. In 1963, President Kennedy stated that simple justice requires that public funds, to which all taxpayers of all races contribute, not be spent in any fashion which encourages, entrenches, subsidizes, or results in racial discrimination. Title VI applies to recipients of federal financial assistance. This includes government grants, in-kind donations of surplus property or use of equipment, training, or any other federal funding or assistance, whether received directly by an agency or as a sub-grantee. A recipient then is obligated to provide appropriate language access services to all the recipient's programs and activities, even if only one part of the recipient receives the federal assistance. What is national origin discrimination? Title VI prohibits discrimination based on race, color, and national origin. LEP individuals are protected from national origin discrimination under Title VI because national origin discrimination was found to include one's language by the United States Supreme Court in Lau v. Nichols, a case that will be discussed in more detail later in this presentation. Section 602 of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 
authorizes and directs federal agencies that are empowered to extend federal financial assistance to any program or activity to effectuate the provisions of Section 601 by issuing rules, regulations, or orders of general applicability. Pursuant to Section 602 of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Department of Justice issued Regulation 28 U.S. Code 42.104 which defines the discrimination that is prohibited by Title VI. Section 42.104 states that no person in the United States shall, on the grounds of race, color, or national origin, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be otherwise subjected to discrimination under any program to which this subpart applies. Section 42.104 also prohibits recipients from utilizing criteria or methods of administration which have the effect of subjecting individuals to discrimination because of their race, color, or national origin, or have the effect of defeating or substantially impairing accomplishment of the objectives of the program as respects individuals of a particular race, color, or national origin. Executive Order 12250, entitled Leadership and Coordination of Non-Discrimination Laws, signed by President Carter in 1980, delegates the function relating to approval of rules, regulations, and orders of general applicability vested in the President by Section 602 of the Civil Rights Act to the Attorney General. And it establishes that the Attorney General shall coordinate the implementation and enforcement by executive agencies of various non-discrimination provisions of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and other laws. Executive Order 13166, entitled Improving Access to Services for Persons with Limited English Proficiency, was signed by President Clinton in the year 2000. Executive Order 13166 requires federal agencies to examine the services they provide, identify any need for services to those with limited English proficiency, and develop and implement a system to provide those services so LEP persons can have meaningful access to them. It is expected that agency plans will provide for such meaningful access consistent with, and without unduly burdening, the fundamental mission of the agency. The executive order also requires that federal agencies that provide federal financial assistance work to ensure that recipients of their federal financial assistance provide meaningful access to their LEP applicants and beneficiaries. Under Executive Order 13166, the Department of Justice has a unique role. The Executive Order charges the Department of Justice with responsibility for providing LEP guidance to other federal agencies, and for ensuring consistency among each agency's specific guidance. Therefore, this training will use the Department of Justice's guidance as a model for the analysis and discussion of appropriate language access services, each federal agency that is authorized to extend federal financial assistance should have their own LEP guidance to assist their recipients in meeting their obligations under Title VI. Those guidance documents are generally available online at lep.gov. The Department of Justice's Guidance to Federal Financial Assistance Recipients Regarding Title VI Prohibition Against National Origin Discrimination Affecting Limited English Proficient Persons, issued in 2002, establishes the expectation or fundamental principle that recipients are required to take reasonable steps to ensure meaningful access to their programs and activities by LEP persons. The focus is on the appropriate mix of services needed to provide meaningful access to LEP persons. In your practice, you would want to consult the agency-specific guidance depending on your area of practice. For example, in housing cases, you would want to consult the HUD guidance and determine if the provider is a recipient of federal financial assistance to know if they are governed by that guidance. Under this overarching principle, the guidance sends out a four-factor test that recipients are to use to conduct an individualized assessment to determine the language access services that are needed. Factor 1. The number or proportion of LEP persons served or encountered in the eligible service population. Here, the greater the number of proportion of here, the greater the number or proportion of LEP persons from a particular language group served or encountered, the more likely language services are needed. The eligible service population depends on the nature of the service provided. 
such that the service area may be a very small geographic region served or statewide. Some issues to be aware of in this factor are the need to have up-to-date data on the languages spoken in a given area, including a mechanism to identify newly emerging languages in the area. Factor 2. The frequency with which LEP individuals come in contact with the program. The more frequent the contact with a particular language group, the more likely that enhanced language services in that language are needed. Even if recipients serve LEP persons on an infrequent basis, the recipient needs to still use the balancing analysis to determine how to provide all LEP persons with meaningful access to their services. Factor 3. The nature and importance of the program, activity, or services provided by the program. The more important the activity, information, service, or program, or the greater the possible consequences of the contact to the LEP individual, the more likely languages services are needed. Factor 4. The resources available to the recipient and costs. A recipient's resources and the costs associated with language services are a consideration in the four-factor test. However, recipients are encouraged to carefully consider cost-effective means of delivering competent language services before limiting services due to resource concerns. The cost of many services can be spread out over time, and technology and other efficiency measures are available to assist recipients in meeting their Title VI obligations. What does it mean to provide language services? Develop a written plan. The Department of Justice guidance encourages recipient entities to develop a language access plan to address the needs identified under this analysis. The plan should cover 1. Identification of LEP individuals in need of language assistance. 2. The language assistance measures that the entity provides, including procedures for staff to access those services. 3. Training of staff regarding the policies and procedures for providing language services. 4. Notification to the public regarding the language services available. 5. Provisions for monitoring and updating the LEP plan. Under the individualized assessment of the four-factor test, there are some basic concepts that are part of the consideration in providing appropriate language access services. Services can be provided by interpreter services, oral, or through translation services, written. And language services can also be provided by bilingual staff, interpreters, and translators. Services provided need to be competent, meaning that the recipient must be aware of the skill level of individuals they are using as interpreters and translators. According to the Department of Justice's LEP guidance, the benchmark for timely services is that the language assistance should be provided at a time and place that avoids the effective denial of the service, benefit, or right at issue, or the imposition of an undue burden on or delay in important rights, benefits, or services to the LEP person. And finally, generally, language services must be provided free of charge. Case Law Lau v. Nichols from 1974 was a civil rights case that was brought by Chinese American LEP students living in San Francisco. The United States Supreme Court in Lao found that the lack of linguistically appropriate accommodations effectively denied the students equal educational opportunities. Among other things, Lao reflects the now widely accepted view that a person's language is so closely intertwined with their national origin that language-based discrimination is a part of national origin discrimination. Alexander v. Sandoval, 2001 in Alexander v. Sandoval, the United States Supreme Court held that Title VI remedies differed between Section 601 and Section 602. Prior to Alexander v. Sandoval, individuals could file a lawsuit against recipients of federal financial assistance for discrimination on the basis of race, color, or national origin under either Section 601 or 602. In Alexander, the Supreme Court held that the remedies for discrimination claims were not the same under Section 601 and 602, and that an individual did not have a private right of action to bring a claim under Section 602's disparate impact discrimination, but instead had to rely on the administrative complaint process. After this case, an individual may still file a claim under Section 601 for intentional discrimination. It is important to understand the distinction between what may be required under federal law through Title VI and its implementing regulations 
and the current practice of states via their regulations on provision of interpreter services in different settings. This is why it is so important to understand the obligations of recipients generally, in order to understand if and when a recipient's provision of language services may stray from those obligations. For example, in the court context, Title VI implementing regulations and the Department of Justice guidance do not distinguish between case types, civil or criminal, when determining the right to language service and the need of recipients to provide meaningful access. However, some state courts around the country do limit the right to an interpreter in legal proceedings by case type. Outside of courts, substantive areas of law may have relevant case law on the rights to interpreters in particular settings. This topic is outside the scope of this training, however, it is something to be aware of when working with a client on a particular matter. The U.S. Court Interpreter Act, 28 United States Code, Section 1827, entitled Interpreters in the Courts of the United States, commonly referred to as the U.S. Court Interpreter Act, governs the use of interpreters for proceedings conducted in federal courts. The Act establishes that the Director of the Administrative Office of the United States Courts shall establish a program to facilitate the use of certified and otherwise qualified interpreters in judicial proceedings instituted by the United States and it provides for the provision of interpreter services in proceedings initiated or instituted by the United States. Additional considerations may include the American with Disabilities Act and the Rehabilitation Act of 1974, which may be relevant when working with a client who is deaf and also LEP, or with LEP clients who are disabled. Your state may have specific legislation around the use of interpreters in specific settings. For example, in most states, court interpreters are provided for and governed by state statute or court rule. This has been an overview of the basic language access laws and policies, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This is a starting point in understanding that an LEP client may have the right to language access services in their interactions with programs or services that receive federal financial assistance. Attorneys looking for more information on language access rights can find additional resources at LEP.gov, a website for the Federal Interagency Working Group on Limited English Proficiency. The Department of Justice, Civil Rights Division, Federal Compliance and Coordination Section maintains a website with a substantial amount of language access resources and updates, including a blog at the web address on your screen. Attorneys can also join a national organization for language access advocates, NLAAN, or the National Language Access Advocates Network. Additional resources can be found at state-level language access coalitions. For example, in Washington State, the Washington State Coalition for Language Access maintains a website and coordinates efforts to improve language access for LEP persons in Washington State.